Hi guys, today I'm going to do one of my travel videos and I'm going to be talking about travelling to Carnac, which is in Brittany in France. In my travel videos I talk about where I stayed, what I did, excursions, how much things cost. Most of the stuff I talk about will be linked in the information bar down below or at least listed there if I can't find a website for the particular thing that I'm mentioning. So hopefully this will be a great way for you to plan your visit as well. So I've done a couple of these travel videos now and I want to particularly do this one because it's an area that's very close to my heart. And this is Carnac in Brittany in France. So it's not the most easiest place to get to, but it is beautiful. It's a gorgeous region. I went there many, many times as a child, growing up with my family we went there every year on holiday then I had a big break and then this year I went again I traveled there with my parents and then also with my husband as well and my parents stayed for two weeks we just stayed for one week and we came back via Paris which I'll talk about in a minute as well we went in late June which was great because it was out of season and much much quieter the weather was amazing and um, the weather isn't always amazing in Brittany and France it's normally a bit hotter than the UK but it can have kind of wet weeks as well as I've known from going there as a family in the past. So Karnak as a region is most famous for its standing stones. A lot of people haven't heard about the Karnak standing stones and that's because they aren't a national heritage site yet but they've applied for that and I think that as soon as that happens they will kind of be worldwide famous because if you like standing stones, if you've seen Stonehenge and you think that's amazing, wait until you see Karnak. The stones are not as large as Stonehenge, but there are so many of them, and they're all in lines. Um, it's a really fantastic thing to see, and it's something that I definitely took for granted growing up. I just kind of, it was just there, you know, outside the campsite where we stayed. But actually, it's a very beautiful, kind of majestic thing to see, quite amazing. But stones aside, Karnak is just a really beautiful place to go as a region. The countryside there is quite different to the UK. It's very piney, the forests are like very piney. The houses are quite distinctive, they're sort of boxy and white with beautiful shutters in all different colours, mostly a navy blue, that kind of lovely French blue, but then also like mint green and stuff like that. And then there are high ranges everywhere. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen all my um, Insta stories of hide rangers, which are a flower that I adore. And Karnak literally has so many hide rangers. There's something to do with the soil because hide rangers, just a little interlude here, hide rangers, um, change colour dependent on what the soil type is like so in England you get a lot of kind of faded coloured high rangers which are sort of wishy-washy colours which are beautiful in their own way because they look very ethereal and faded but in Karnak you just get the most amazing coloured high rangers and sort of every house seems to have a plant out, high ranger outside it it's this like really lavender coloured um, purple and then bright acid blue it looks fantastic and it's something that I always think of when I think of the region. So how did we get to Karnak? It's not exactly the easiest place to get to from where we live, which is in the southeast of England. So we drove to the Eurotunnel, then went over on the Eurotunnel and then drove from Calais to Karnak, which is a long drive, it's about six hours. In the past we've done different things, you can get an overnight ferry which actually takes you further into France, so then you have a much shorter drive to Karnak when you get off the ferry the other end. Or you can take a day ferry, which also does a similar thing, but you just have a slightly longer drive. So we've experimented with all different stuff, but this is kind of what suits my family and what we've always done. The place that we stayed in Karnak is a campsite called La Grande Metairie, and that'll be linked down below. It is a really lovely campsite. When I say campsite, this is like a deluxe campsite. It's really, really gorgeous. It's huge. Um, it's built uh, on an old farmhouse and the land surrounding it. There's a massive swimming complex with like three different pools, two of which are indoor. Um, it has, you know, slides and all sorts. Yeah, it's a really big campsite. Zip wires in there. And there's all sorts of different accommodation options as well. So the thing that I think is really cool is they have tree houses there, so you can stay in a tree house. But they also have uh, gypsy caravans that you can stay in, beach huts, and then normal caravans as well. We stayed in a slightly upgraded normal kind of caravan. And when I say caravan, it's not what you might think of as a caravan. It's like a huge mobile home. It looks more like a lodge. It has three bedrooms, dishwasher, bathroom, lounge area, TV, outside decking. It's, it's great. There are other campsites in the area that you can go to that are cheaper, or there are Airbnb options, or there are sort of chalets that you can rent as well. But Le Grand Metairie is a fantastic campsite, and I just love all the extra features you get when you're there, like the pool and stuff like that. So excursions to do in the region of Karnak. Because I have been there many, many times with my family, we have built up a whole backlog of stuff that we can do. But I will just go through now the sort of best stuff that you can do. Starting with seeing the stones, and this can be a completely free thing to do. You can just walk around the stones, you can't get 
like really close to them but you can walk around the outside of the perimeters you can go and stand on the viewing stations and look at the stones you can go to the activity center those are super cool and i wouldn't underestimate how awesome they look especially when you're on a viewing platform and you can see them all in lines like stretching for ages you can also do a guided tour as well which is what we've done in the past and we did this time we went as well that takes you into the enclosure so you can get up close and personal with the stones if you want to you can touch them but then you also obviously you get told a lot more information about the stones and different theories about whether they think they're there and all sorts of stuff like that. It's really, really interesting. Another fantastic thing to do in Karnak is to go and see the two different towns. So Karnak is split into Karnak Plage, which is the sort of town that's built up around the beach, and then Old Karnak Town. Old Karnak Town is beautiful. It reminds me of the village that Belle lives in in Beauty and the Beast. It's very, very small, but you have the beautiful cobbled courtyard, the church, you have some really nice interior shops and some cafes and a couple of restaurants and stuff like that. A short drive away from the town of Karnak is a place called La Trinité, or sorry, if you to use its full name, La Trinité Sommer, and that is a really posh and fancy um, marina. And we like to go there in the evening sometimes, grab an ice cream and just walk along the front and look at the amazing huge yachts. La Trinité sur Mer is just a really nice place to kind of hang out and there are nice clothes shops there, there's a really great photography gallery that you can go and look around. Just a nice place to hang out in the evenings, it's really good. Another thing you can do in Karnak is to go to the plage itself, the beach. Lovely big open space, all the houses along the seafront are gorgeous, really old houses. And then a short drive away again is an area called San Filibert. This is a tiny fishing village that has a beautiful church in it. Inside it's all painted and there are like ships hanging from the ceiling, it's just really cool. And the place San Felipe is just generally a nice, pretty little fishing village to look around. It's quite similar, I guess, to Cornwall in England um, in its kind of feel. And then along the same lines is a little place called Loch Maria Kerr, which is another small fishing village that has a little bit more going on there. Um, there's some nice interior shops there, there's some great restaurants, and it's just generally a nice place to walk around with pretty houses, with lovely blue shutters and all that sort of stuff. So just a nice place to hang out. And then a slightly longer drive away, but something definitely worth seeing is called Coates Varge and you head to Kibron, which is like on a peninsula um, in Karnak, and it's like sticks right out. Um, and then you drive along the coast, and there are various stopping points where you can, there's little car parks where you park up and you go and you have a look at the beautiful view. And when we went, the weather was glorious, so it was just like, the sea was just sparkling and it was so pretty and nice. And then one of my absolute favourite places to go in Karnak is a little village called San Gustan. This is a former fishing port and it has a river running through it, it's a beautiful bridge over the river, the streets are all cobbly, and the houses are sort of beamed and old. There's quite a lot to look at here so it's a bit more bustly than the other places that I've mentioned um, and there's lots of shops and loads of tourists it's the kind of place that's very popular so we tend to go in the mornings where it's a bit quieter um, and then uh, you can walk around the lovely old town and then you can go up a huge steep hill like really really steep and when you get to the top there's a more modern town called Oray we stopped there for a while and had some nice drinks on the riverfront it was very very pretty but then food to talk about generally in Karnak I think food generally in France is quite expensive so um, that's just something to be aware of but we were in a caravan and we were self-catered so we got most of our food from um, the markets or like the local supermarché um, and there was a little shop on the campsite as well for like essentials. But if I was to talk about two particular dishes that are important in the region, I would mention moule de cidre, I think moule à la cidre or moule de cidre, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but that is basically mussels in cider. Cider from Brittany is delicious and often they'll serve it in like clay cups, which is just really tasty. And they mix that in with the moule as well. Mm so good but if moule isn't really your thing then i'd also recommend having a galette and a galette is a savory pancake my husband was very suspicious of galettes before he had one and i had to kind of force him to eat it it is delicious and he was completely converted to the world of galettes because galettes are so tasty it's basically like a savory pancake um, and it's all folded in and then you can get like delicious fillings and um, so foresty air is one of my favorite fillings and that's where it's like cream and mushroom and some bacon um, but you can also have like cheese and ham and egg in there as well oh 
so good. It's just making me really hungry even thinking about it. So yes, if you go, make sure you have a galette or a moule. So I've kind of finished talking about Carnet now. I'm going to talk a little bit about Paris on the way back because as I said, we only stayed for one week and my parents were there for two weeks. So we travelled up with them in their car and then we went back by ourselves. So we were driven by them to Rennes, which is about an hour and a half away from Carnac. We did look to see if we could catch a train from Carnac itself, but there's only, on the day that we wanted to travel, there was only one in the morning and we just thought that was a little bit risky. We went to Rennes and then we caught a train from Ren to Paris. The price of the train was very reasonable and it was a very quick and easy journey straight to Paris. We then had to walk across Paris to the Gare du Nord and instead of getting a bus or a metro we decided that we would walk it. We thought we had this kind of romantic idea that we would just walk across and stop and see the sights and it would be lovely. I've been to Paris before so it wasn't like I needed to tick loads of things off my list. I think in hindsight we probably won't do that again because we did have our cases with us and they were heavy to carry and it was extremely hot so we just ended up getting very sweaty and tired and um, I think we'll probably in the future if we do that again get the metro because it's just quicker and easier. But we did get to see Paris, we did get to walk through it. Um, Paris is the tea capital of the world, apparently. Um, so we decided to stop at a tea place because as you may know, if you've been watching my videos for a while, I am a tea obsessive. I have a whole video dedicated to my tea obsession, so I'll leave that link down below if you want to see that. So we stopped at this really beautiful tea place called the Tea Caddy, and it's like down a side road, and you can see Notre Dame if you sit outside it. And that was really nice, actually, and we had some tea. I had some rose tea, which was really tasty. My husband had lavender tea, which was nice, but not as tasty as the rose tea. And then just around the corner from the tea caddy was Shakespeare and Company bookshop. So whilst I was waiting for our tea to come, I went and quickly nipped in and had a look at the Shakespeare and Company bookshop, which is always a pleasure. And once we got to the Garden Hall, we then went from there and got the Eurostar back to London. And then sadly, we weren't in France anymore. And that was the end of our trip. So I hope that I have either inspired you to think about going to Karnak in Brittany as a holiday destination if you are looking for places to travel to or if you are going there then maybe you might try some of the places that I've mentioned. If you've already been to Karnak before I would love to know what you think about it and if you have any recommendations of things to do then please do leave it in a comment down below. Talking about Karnak is one of my favourite pastimes so I'll happily chat away about it all day long. I have a video that accompanies this which is 60 seconds of Karnak so if you want to see the sights of some of the things that I've been talking about then do go and watch that, I'll link that down below. Also if you're thinking of maybe travelling somewhere else or if you want some more travel recommendations then I have other videos, I've got one about travelling to Florence and I've also got one about travelling in the winter to Norway, so Tromsø in Norway which is the northernmost city in the world and I'll link those down below as well. But that's it for now guys, thanks very much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!